Charlie's career progression has been really interesting. She started out as being the I don't care, boom, clap, I'm so fancy girl to being the weird experimental pop girl that made Pop 2 and was heralded by fans and music nerds all across the globe. I specifically say music nerds and, you know, internet people because you don't really tend to come across anyone these days uh, very often that could name many Charlie XCX songs or really name uh, any of her albums that have come out over the past few years, despite the fact that she has been really interesting. And Vroom Vroom was a really good EP. The title track to the EP is fantastic. Um, How I'm Feeling Now was a really good album too. They are the highlights of her career, in my opinion. Uh, notice how I didn't mention any of the other ones because personally, I'm actually not the biggest fan of any of her other projects, aside from those two, which will get me killed in these parts of the internet. But I've just got to be honest with how I'm feeling now. These are the albums and projects and EPs I think are her best. And uh, the, 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 the Charlie album, man, I just didn't like that one at all. I thought her dibble dabbling in the, the mainstream pop world was pretty underwhelming considering that's where she started. You'd think um, an artist going back to their roots when they were doing pop music before would be able to nail it, but Charlie didn't on that album at all, in my opinion. And uh, how I'm feeling now was stepping back to her usual style and I thought it worked really well. So this whole release schedule for this album has been really weird because she's been trying to talk about how she's um, part of the industry and she's basically a uh, puppet on a string because she's being controlled by people to make certain kinds of music. She didn't want to make this. She's, you know, uh, an artist that used to make better music and this isn't as good as her old stuff. It's all been a bit weird, to be honest. And considering Charlie was already the mainstream album, the mainstream pop sounding album, I mean, it, it literally had 1999 on it and a Lizzo feature. This whole release schedule has just been a mess and not made any sense. I mean, it's been successful for the music part of it because some of these tracks have done really well for her and the album's doing well for her too. But just in terms of how she's tried to sell it and how she's promoted it, it's just made no sense. It's, you did pop music before. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. It's not like it's bled into the overarching theme. It would have been quite fun if there was some kind of like critique of pop music and maybe how the industry treats artists, particularly treating her. Maybe she could have had some interesting stories to tell. Like there could have been so much to do with this while also just making some fun banging pop music. She could have done that if that's how you're going to set up the album, but she didn't at all. But just to take this album for what it is, I'm kind of conflicted, but overall, I think it's decent. I think it's all right. I like quite a lot of these songs. I think the opening track is one of the highlights, to be honest. I think the uh, clashing vocals that layer layered over each other sound really icy, like a glacier in, you know, Antarctica kind of like crashing. And you can just kind of see like, you know, the penguins are running away. Is, uh, did, I, did I get the right place, uh, Antarctica penguins? I think that's right, right? Yeah, yeah. It reminds me if you kind of like blossom the vocals of someone from Drain Gang and maybe, you know, Charlie was at the front and center of a Drain Gang track, this would be what it sounded like. That's what it get, gives me, really. And um, I, I like it. I like how it sounds. I think the tasty guitar coming in at the end is really, really worthwhile too. I think that sounds great. So yeah, good start to the album. I think this is really good. I still think Good Ones is a decent, catchy pop tune. The uh, remix version, actually, I think it was Joel Corey that did it. It's honestly even better. If you replace this version with that version, I think I'd be happy to hear that on this album in replacement of it. But even as a standalone individual track, I think this is good. Very obvious lyrics about how she just always lets the good ones go. It's very basic, man, but as a pop tune, I'm okay with it. Beg For You, really good track. An obvious interpolation that I did not catch on first listen and it is recorded out there on the internet for you to see. And I didn't even pick up on it. It was such an obvious sample that they've used here. It's taking up most of the track, the vocal melodies. And as interpolations go, I think it's really good. I mean, it can go either two ways. It can go like this, where it sounds great, or you can botch it and it just sounds really like a carbon copy, which I will get to that 
later because there is literally both versions of an interpolation on this album. The two-step influence I think is great. Rina comes through as well. Just a great collaboration here for anyone that's been keeping up with Rina's music over the years. You would know that these two coming together makes so much sense and it does work really well. I think this track is just really good. This is one of the best tracks and like I say, the obvious sample doesn't ruin it for me. I think they do a good job with it. I think the vocals work perfectly. I think adding that, you know, gnarly kind of two-step beat on top of it really helped give this track an originality that I think probably wouldn't have been there if they didn't include that beat. So I think that beat is really pivotal on this song. New Shapes is really the only track in this first little string of songs that I thought was a bit let of a letdown, actually, because I really like Caroline Polacek and also Christine and the Queens. I think Caroline Polacek sells the fuck out of her verse and is the easy highlight on this song. But the hook itself is so underwhelming, man. I feel like the verses outshine the chorus and I don't think that's really how you really want to make a song, a pop song particularly. The, 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 the chorus just feels really stagnant couldn't really get much out of it. It doesn't really pop or anything like that. It just slows down the song and doesn't really sound that catchy, to be honest. So yeah, that's a bit of a letdown, that one. The midsection of the album is really strong as well, though. Uh, you've got Lightning in there, which has a, an 80s influence. There's a bit of an 80s influence kicking through, actually, in some of these tracks in the middle, which I'm all appreciative of. Reminded me a little bit of like Carly Rae Jepsen's sort of approach to pop music. They're not exactly the same in how they sound, but I think the approach to the kind of just straight up pop jams is there. Move Me and also like the opening track are probably the two closest songs to her going back to her roots or her roots, not really her roots, her delving into the experimental pop world um, that really gave her an interesting arc to begin with. And I think going back to this on this track with the jaggedy vocals, it just works for her style. This is why How I'm Feeling Now, I think, worked quite well too, because it just was her kind of honing in everything she'd put together over the past few years and just nailing the sound. I had to have a quick check as well of like the, uh, the credits on this song. I don't think Flume is on it, but that instrumental to me sounded so much, <laughs> so much, so much like similar to what we've heard Flume do before, which by the way is a very big compliment because Flume is, 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 is ace. He's ace. But yeah, the second half of the album though, uh, lost me a little bit. I, it starts to bring out the, the weaker tracks for me. Um, used to know me. <laughs> The Love Island comparison from my friend Josh was perfect because this this sounds exactly like something that would play in the background of a Love Island episode. A hundred percent bang on. And shout out to Jack as well. I was I was I was I was adamant that I knew where this sample was and I couldn't think of it. But of course, it's Show Me Love by Robin S. The You Got to Show Me Love. <laughs> this is the carbon copy I was talking about earlier man because it is literally just the same track and she doesn't really bring anything new to it i mean it sounds decent it sounds like a decent club banger uh that i'm sure probably is ready made to be put into any club in the uk right now uh, whether it will be or not i don't know but we might we may have to see that but uh yeah like it sounds okay but just the obvious comparison to be made to something else just puts me off a little bit and that's where beg for you worked for me because i didn't think it was that obvious and they did something a little different and put their own spin on it which made it a better track every rule slows down the album not really that keen on this one honestly uh it sounds a lot like within by daft punk from uh random access memories i don't know again if that's a sample i don't think it is but this is the thing with the album, it starts to hit a point where you're just like, this sounds like this, and this sounds like this, and this sounds like this, and this sounds like this. I don't really like Yuck either, I think the lyrical theme on this one's just really annoying. Just reminds me of any person out there that's just so, you know, lovey-dovey and wants a relationship. You know those people, I just really want a boyfriend. And then one comes around and is nice to you, and then you're like, Ew. It's just stuff like this annoys me, man. Like, you know, yeah, sure, maybe the guy was being a bit cringe, but just the way she frames it and sells it, I just think is even more cringe than probably what the guy was doing by giving her roses and stuff. 
What a crime. Why would he do that? Luckily, the final track ends the album off really well. I quite like the vocal performance on this one. So at least once we get to the end, it ties up quite nicely and isn't just a string of tracks that I'm not too keen on. Because I was a bit worried. I was like, oh, is every track in the second half just going to be something I'm not too keen on? Ooh, but no, no, the last track was good. Really like the twinkly melody that comes through on this track as well. Just really lovely. Um, all around. Her voice just sounds really starry. Everything just works with this track and um, yeah, nice end to the album. But overall, um, a, a bit of a spotty album, to be honest. The weirdest thing about this album is that it feels like a debut album. This feels like an artist that still hasn't fully realised their identity yet. They're dibble-dabbling in different sounds and different genres and they're blending things together. They're sort of working things out. They're sampling songs, you know, just to kind of get that recognisability, to get that hit that pops off on TikTok just because it sounds like something else and it's familiar and it sounds good enough to, you know, make people go, ooh, I like this, even though it is pretty much like a carbon copy. They're still finding their feet, all that kind of thing. Um, perhaps they're being pushed by a record label, which has been the whole point of this album too. Like, it just all feels like, you know, an artist got a TikTok hit and then just got snapped up and was like, right, we need to just put a, put an album out from this artist. We need, uh, you know, 10, however many pop tracks to pop off. It just feels like that. And in a lot of ways, it probably is that. And I'm sure Charlie will find a way to escape this at some point because it feels like a heart's not fully in it. And I think that's the issue overall here. But the songs themselves sound quite good, which is the ironic thing. And, you know, it, it's not like it, everything she did here was bad. I think actually overall she could use some of these ideas going forward while also, you know, going back to that style that made her a bit more recognisable with things like Pop 2. I mean, I'm not even the biggest fan of Pop 2, but I'd much prefer her to see if she can get a bit riskier and do more things like that while also maybe doing a bit more of a you know a pop twist on that as well so yeah overall i'm feeling like a six i'm feeling a six it's all right it's decent um I, there's a lot of tracks i like uh, quite a few tracks i didn't like but i think generally it's a solid album and um it's a weird one it's a weird one it's a very odd one because it just doesn't feel like Charlie's fully in this um, and I think there's probably more to her as an artist to be honest I think there's more creativity and I don't think it's quite there even if the product the end product's actually been pretty solid you know solid set of pop tracks that are pretty popping so yeah interesting to see where she goes from here uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments thank you as always for watching shout out to my patreons for supporting me as always, you guys are fantastic. If you want to support me and all the videos that I put out there, you can check out my Patreon and contribute if you would like. Subscribe, would definitely love that as well. Have a good day. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Goodbye.